and it is an honor and a pleasure to welcome back to the program, Mark Taylor. It is great to have you back on the program, my friend. Welcome. Thank you, Sheila. It's an honor and a pleasure to be back. Thank you for having me. Well, and sometimes I really wonder how many people are doing that. You know, how many people are really praying over their city? How many people are praying for this nation? How many people are praying for Trump? Because this is really where the rubber meets the road is going into your war room, getting with your prayer partners. That's really where it counts because our prayers are going to make all the difference when it comes to these ubiquitous, relentless attacks. And these are, boy, there's a good word right there. This stuff coming at him is absolutely relentless. Yeah, and that's that's part of the strategy, believe it or not. Um, I believe God's allowing this to happen, number one, because as people do the attacking, they're exposing themselves. God's not even having to pull a veil back. <laughs> these people these people are exposing themselves. So, I mean, that's, I believe, is part of God's plan, and that's what people have to understand. The second thing is, is I get a lot of emails, Sheila, from people that are panicking. Oh, my gosh, what's going to happen with the president? Is he going to be impeached? Uh, is he going to be assassinated? Folks, he's not going anywhere. God's hand is upon him. He will not be assassinated. Not one hair on that man's head or his family's head will be harmed. This is why it's working. All of this manifestation, Sheila, is because our warfare is working. That's what people have to realize. They're exposing themselves. And in the process of being exposed, they will be taken down. I just read the prophecy about the news media. But people are panicking because it's like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Look, folks, your warfare is working. This is why it's manifesting in the way that it's manifesting. Our warfare is working. Amen. Absolutely agree. Listen to what he just said, folks. Our warfare is working, and we got to keep at it because this is a really important time. We can't give up now because, and it looks like things are just crazy train. That's when we have to ramp up our warfare. That's when we have to ramp up the prayer. That's when we have to get with the fasting program here because I'll tell you what, nothing moves the hand of God like prayer and fasting. What does James 5.16 say? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, what does it do? It availeth much. Go study that out. Your prayers are powerful. Well, easy for you to say. I don't have any prayer partners in my area. There's lots of ways that people can get involved. I have a Wednesday night prayer group. Mary's got a group. Hey, even if you don't have a church in your community, you don't have one prayer partner, you can join us in prayer, can't they, Mark? Absolutely. Look, we, we have the national prayer call going on still right now. Mary, You can go to marycolbert.us, sign up for free. doesn't cost you a dime. I get emails, people asking me, hey, can we get involved here or there? We're trying to get prayer calls in each state, Sheila, right now. We're trying to get prayer leaders to lead a call, and it doesn't cost a dime to do it. It's free. All you got to do is just sign up. If you are chosen by God to lead a national prayer call in your state, Sign up for it. We're, we're, we're asking for help for this because we want to get prayer going in all 50 states, 24-7 around the clock. I don't care if there's already two or three prayers going on in the same state. If you are called or chosen by God to do this, come help us. Get involved. They can get online. You know, we have seen time after time after time God intervene in that first, in that 60 days we did the national prayer call before the election. And look at the outcome. We saw supernatural occurrences time after time, and we're still seeing it happen, literally. Yeah, and this is so important because, like you said, prayer in every state, that is so powerful because I'll tell you what, the mainstream church, and not all, but almost all of them in the mainstream, these mega churches, you know, it's bad enough that salvation's optional nowadays, but prayer? Are you kidding me? And, you know, a lot of people send me emails and they hammer me on, oh, you know, I don't think it's right you're talking about the 501c3, but Mark, you and I have talked about this before. I don't really think Christians quite understand the issue with the 501c3 and how devilish it is, do they? No, they don't. And basically what the 501c3 did is they entered into a covenant with Baal. It's the Baal system. And, you know, we're called to rule and reign on this earth. And the problem is, is that it was a bribe that was given to the church back in 1954. And, you know, the Bible talks about he who takes a bribe, it blinds the eyes of the righteous and defiles their words. So that's why I can't even step foot into a 501c3 church. Yeah. People, you know what I mean? I can't do it. But they were blinded. This is why we have no discernment. This is why we have no power and authority. And people don't understand the ramifications of this. Now, we're called to rule and reign on this earth. 
The problem is, is that the church is why they're not flowing in power and authority is because they're being governed over. How can you govern when you're being governed over by the federal government through the 501c3, number one, and number two, you're being governed over at the state level because you're incorporated. You can't do it. So when people say Jesus Christ is the head of my ministry, but you're a 501c3 or you're incorporated, no, he's not. You just cut the head off of the Lord. You're no longer a part of the body, so to speak, because the state is now in charge of you. The pastor works for the state. So if you're at the 501c3, the federal government or bail is now the head of your ministry. So it just, you know, people don't understand the ramifications. They just, I encourage people, again, the Bible says, search a matter out. You know, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And that's what's going on with the church right now. I had a lady, uh, speaking of that, she emailed me today, blasting me, saying I was lumping in the Catholic church with the satanic church on one of the pages. So she thought I was picking on the Catholics. It was just (laughs) people hear and read what they want to hear and read. And it's like, look, you don't understand. I don't care if they're Baptist, Assemblies of God, uh, Episcopalian. I don't care who they are. If they're a 501c3, you are in covenant with Baal. This video belongs to lordsprophecy.com. Please visit our website for more update. Lordsprophecy.com. Spelling L O R D S Prophecy.com. Thanks for your support. Absolutely. And you talk about this in your book. You go into more detail about the 501c3. But I think the important thing for people to take away from this is when you get into a 501c3, you get into bed with Hell's Kitchen, let me tell you, because it's the Church of Satan, Planned Parenthood, gay and lesbian advocates. I could go on and on. It is a who's who of the, the pit of hell, Mark. Yes, and the Bible says do not be unequally yoked. And the problem is when you're a 501c3, you are now yoked with those organizations. So when pro-life ministries are trying to take on legally in the court system and and do the correct thing, they don't understand. You're yoked with pro-choice and Planned Parenthood. So what you're trying to do in the spiritual realm legally has just been taken from you because, you know, the Lord says you can't cast out Satan with Satan. Well, how can you take on an entity like Baal when you're a part of it? You're in covenant with him. You know, Baal is a very violent entity. It feeds off the blood of the innocent, which is the abortion issue, which is a whole other issue. But the point being is this is why we're not making any headway in the legal system, because all of our pro-life ministries, most of them are 501c3s. And I get that there's a lot of great organizations that go under 501c3, but the problem is you get under this, you take the rules, you take the legislation, they just put the boots to you. And they're going to tell you what you can and can't do. And that is the frightening part of it. Yeah, you know, and I have a friend of mine who's a, a CPA out in, um, in another state. He's a very good Christian man. You know, he's explained, you know, I, don't, I don't, I'm not a CPA. I can't explain all of this, but there are ways to set up your church. There are ways to set up your organization to get out from underneath the government's thumb. And, you know, he said one of those, and it's going to depend on state to state because every state's got different laws set forth. But one of those is you could put it under a trust, you know, unincorporate, because the bottom line is this, is that if you get a state that has rogue leadership yeah. like California, let's say that, that Trump does completely away with the 501c3, which the 501c3 is, is still kind of there. It's not it's a good start what he did. And we're working on it. God may do this through a process. But just say you get a rogue state like California leadership out there and He does away with the 501c3, but yet they're incorporated. They're still answering to the state. So now what happens is is you get this guy, Jerry Brown, comes in and he says, hey, if you're an incorporated church, you're going to preach homosexuality and transgender from the pulpit or we're going to shut you down. Yeah. Legally, they can do that. That's the problem. You know, that's why the Lord turned the tables over in the in the temple, because they were turning it into a business. The house of prayer is what we're talking about here, was never meant to be a corporation, a business, and they're running churches as a business. I agree. You nailed it. In fact, they're not even glorified social clubs. Churches are a business. That's absolutely correct. And not that long ago, I was reading, I was reading Acts and I I don't know if this was kind of a vision or just something God dropped in my spirit, but I kept seeing this conveyor belt. And instead of money going into the churches, the conveyor belt was going the other way. And I kept feeling that God was saying, what are the churches doing with my resources? And as soon as that happened, I continued reading. God took me to bingo right to that scripture about Ananias and Sapphira. And I thought, You know, it wouldn't surprise me if some people started dropping dead, just like in that situation where they were robbing God. These mega churches, what are they doing with all God's resources? They're not feeding the homeless and helping the orphans and the poor and and needy and the 
the widows, they're building bigger barns. And you know what, Mark? I don't think God's going to put up with this much longer. Right. And, and the, what people have to understand is that judgment starts in the house of the Lord, and it's already started, period. And part of this is the corruption inside the church, which is the money issue. Now, it's funny you bring up uh, Ananias and, and Sapphira, is that what the Lord was showing me was that, you know, they sold their properties, they sold lands, they sold homes, and they brought it all in together, and they distributed it so that no one was in lack. Now, if that's supposed to be the New Testament church, do you see that going on in these churches right now? All I see going on, and I know I'm going to get hammered for this, but I'm going to say it anyway. It's almost like a pyramid scheme. All you see is the pastor and the upper echelon getting all the money while the congregation is out there believing for you know a miracle, basically. They're sowing into a miracle, like this prosperity message that we've been talking about. But they're out there. They're busted. They're broke. They're sick. They're tired. But yet, upper echelon is living like a rock star. So you don't see that. So if you had some of these mega churches that are bringing in tens of millions of dollars every year in a 30,000 congregation, if you took that money, everybody would have enough money. Nobody would be broke. Nobody would be in debt. But you don't see that going on. I don't know how much longer uh, some of these people are going to even be around because, you know, we've lost, what, three people already this year yep. out of ministry. Yeah. And and so, I mean, you're seeing things being exposed right now, the corruption. Um, I, I said a long time ago when all this started a year and a half ago that the electoral process was going to parallel with what's going on in the church right now, that God was going to expose, 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 and you're seeing that taking place right now. You're going to see some people even removed from the face of the earth. We've already seen that already this year. So, I mean, uh, it's going to continue. It's not going to stop because God's going to clean his house up. He, I think you're going to see churches go down. You're going to see him collapse. You're going to see the doors shut. I go back to that prophetic word I wrote that when Donald Trump was elected, uh, a sign would be given that the earth would quake because of who he God has selected. And it was Christ Church New Zealand that got hit. And it was four days after he was uh, elected. The other significant thing was the last time Christ Church New Zealand was decimated by an earthquake was four months after the Trump prophecy was written. So once uh, that took place, that was a prophetic sign saying that Christ's church, there's a shaking and a quaking coming to Christ's church. Now, they were waiting on a tsunami to come in. The first wave would come in. They were waiting on the second one to come in. The first wave, I believe, is what you're seeing taking place right now, which is a mass exodus from the church because the people are starting to catch on. They're tired of the corruption. They're tired of the money issues. Look at the church up there with the naked cowboy or whatever his name is up there dancing on stage. At- Hillsong. Yeah, he'll, yeah, they were, they were, they're tired of that mess. So you're seeing a mass exodus. That's what I believe is the first wave. The second wave I believe is going to take place is going to be the finances are going to take a hit because of the people aren't going to be there. So, again, you're going to see church done in a whole new light. You're going to see it done in the marketplace. You're going to see these home groups breaking out, which I'm seeing personally even seeing taking place right now. My sister's boss has just started a uh, home group to pray for the country, to repent on behalf of the country. She had close to 11 women there, and four had canceled that night. She would have had 16 women. She started a Facebook page. I'm seeing this stuff starting to break out now. So all this stuff starting to take place. So how we do church now is not going to be the same the way we've done it in the last 100, 200 years here in this country. Absolutely. Yeah, the paradigm is absolutely, totally shifting. And I want to go back to something you said earlier, Mark, this idea about Satan's frequencies. I remember doing a show years ago, and I have this expert on, he was talking about the mass hysteria project that was funded by, it was Rothschilds and the Rockefeller Foundation, I think Carnegie, and I think it was also actually in concert with the United States Navy and National Defense Research Council. Anyway, he was able to gain access to these declassified archives, and it contained these incredible psychological warfare projects. They were using acoustic vibrations. They were doing experiments on subjects using techniques to produce mass hysteria. So essentially what it revealed is that, and this is the short version, is the sound and the frequency modulation of electromagnetic manipulations, it doesn't just affect the consciousness, but it impacts physiology and biology. In other words, it controls human behavior. And so the conclusion was control can be waged bioenergetically. And you know what? That seems to be kind of what we're seeing on a massive scale around our country is this total hysteria with what I call these artificial, synthetic, sociopathic, zombified minions that are running around everywhere. I think there's a connection between this because, you know, we talked in the last program you and I did about Nazi Germany and these frequencies and mind control and propaganda techniques. I think this is just really a resurgence of all that. Like even we see that with the newscasts. It's like you said, it ties all back into this 
Satan's frequency. And all of this stuff is tied together, isn't it? It is. It really is. You, you know, um, by detuning stuff and, you know, by broadcasting the news media, uh, the audio part of it, like in 440, this is why when you watch the news media, you get agitated. You know, it creates fear. It creates panic. And this is what's going on in the church. And the church is the, the body of Christ ha- have got to stop being vulnerable to this stuff. You've got to take measures into your own hands and say, look, I'm not listening to the mainstream news media anymore. If I want the news, I usually go to like Fox's website. I'll catch the headlines or something like that. You know, that's not being broadcast, so to speak, in in a frequency where I'm hearing it or anything like that. But what they found through that 440 hertz is that it will also damage your body organs, which is another reason why people are so sick. But it also changes your DNA, which is the goal of the of the Freemasons, the Illuminati. They want you part of that Illuminati bloodline. See, this is why also why you have a lot of prophetic voices, Sheila, prophesying doom and gloom is because they're tuned into Satan's frequency. They can't get above the second heaven. They're hearing the plans of the second heaven and they're prophesying it as if it were the plans of the third heaven. And that's not the case. Those aren't God's plans. So this is why we have prophetic words going from one end of the spectrum to the other and everywhere in between, and nobody can agree. So this is why it's important to get off of Satan's frequency, protect yourself, listen to the good news, whatever that good news may be for that each individual person. And if you're going to listen to music, listen to Christian music, because there are artists out there now who are retuning their instruments to the 444 hertz where it's supposed to be. One of the things that's going to happen is that uh, I wrote back in 2015, before he was even president, October 13th, called Don't Be Deceived, Get in the Fight, and that the Clintons are going to come down, basically. That God was going to take down the Clintons, and he's also going to take down Obama as well. Obama was going to be ripped and stripped of the presidency. Now, a lot of people thought that was going to be him being impeached, and that's not what I sense the Lord was saying. It was going to be after he was out of office, he would be charged with treason, and he would end up going to prison for this, and in which case he would be stripped of all title of the presidency. And I believe that's what you're going to see happen at this point. I wrote another one about a month later called Time is Up for Those Who Are Corrupt. And it talks about judges, senators, congressmen, and women of all kinds, even at the local, state, and federal levels. Even the Supreme Court is not immune from the corrupt and evil ways that God was going to expose them and basically remove them. Now, God's using Donald Trump to do this. He's using the Trump administration to do this. We're seeing this take place right now with these thousands of indictments that are going uh, across right now. And here's the interesting thing I want to say, Steve, concerning the Supreme Court again. It didn't even dawn on me when I prophesied that three would be caught in a scandal as far as the Supreme Court justices were concerned. It didn't even dawn on me. And then all of a sudden, like two weeks ago, literally two weeks ago, I was waking up and I heard the Lord say, Mark, what if these three Supreme Court justices are part of these indictments? And I went, oh my goodness, I didn't even think of that. It didn't even dawn on me. So there is corruption on that court. So God's going to expose that corruption, and sooner or later, these guys are going to be dealt with. So you're seeing the corrupt right now. Divine justice is being poured out upon the earth. It's not coming. It's here. It's not America that's under judgment. It's the systems that are under judgment. It's the leadership. It's the church. You know, judgment starts in the house of the Lord, the Bible says. It is the leadership of the house of God right now that is under judgment, as well as the leadership of this country and worldwide. This is not just a battle for America. This is a battle for the entire earth right now. This is going to spread worldwide, basically, what we're seeing taking place right now. The other thing we talked about was the Roe versus Wade. October 19, 2016, I wrote a prophecy called Full Circle, and it talked about how Russia and the United States would unite and take on that Fourth Reich called ISIS. Now, the Fourth Reich called ISIS, basically, is kind of an extension of the Third Reich, if you will. The New World Order rose its ugly head in World War I. They did it again in World War II. They're doing it again now, and they're using ISIS instead of the Nazis, basically, to do their dirty work. And the Lord is saying that a United States would come in from the West with her allies, Russia would come in from the east, just like in World War II. They would take on this entity called ISIS, and they would be wiped out. Now, we just saw that, how in Syria and in all these other places right now, that ISIS is pretty much almost completely gone. And they're not completely gone yet, but we, I think they had like about 1,000 left. I can't remember what the numbers were, but it was staggering about the fact that the media is not even talking about the fact that ISIS is almost completely wiped out. So there's one that was written in 2016 in October that the Lord has already taken care of. I was reading this uh, this book by George Otis Jr., The Last of the Giants. And it was about how God was removing the leaders of Russia, one after another after another, until Gorbachev comes. And then the wall falls down. He said it's one of the clearest examples of Daniel chapter 2, 20 through 22. 
He changes times and seasons. He raises up kings. He brings them down. He knows what's in the light. The darkness is light to him. Come on. It's the Daniel anointing to shift kings and rulers. And when I read that that morning, I was going to the prayer. I felt I was to bring that book, The Last of the Giants, and read it to our team and declare over them that we needed to believe God for the judges to be removed, to resign or reform. This video belongs to lordsprophecy.com. Please visit our website for more update. lordsprophecy.com. Spelling L O R D S prophecy.com thanks for your support and I came and delivered that word and my friend who's been a prophet to me for 35 years Chris Berglund at the end of it said Lou I had a dream last night and in the dream I saw this paper it said the last of the giants you believe for three judges but I want you to believe for five it's right in line with that word to kind of turn toward the Supreme Court. Let's all turn. Jesus is the great chess master of all history. And Jesus wants to prophesy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And Jesus is saying today, through his ecclesia, to the Supreme Court, checkmate. It's checkmate. Everybody cry, checkmate. 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 Checkmate! 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 In the name of Jesus, we declare it's checkmate over the Supreme Court. So now we say we loose the angels of God around the Supreme Court, in the Supreme Court, above the Supreme Court, below the Supreme Court. We say the holy warrior angels of God are stationed there doing battle right now in Jesus name so Lord we come into alignment right now and we say that these next appointments to the court are inevitable yes. and they are unstoppable because you are the unstoppable God so Lord we would even pray right now for the United States Senate for the Senate Judiciary Committee and we say, let every obstruction to these nominees be removed in the name of Jesus. Everyone out of alignment with your will for these next seats on the court, let them be realigned or removed in the name of Jesus. Lord, we agree. Realign or remove. Everybody say that. Realign or we remove. Realign. Or be removed. One more time. Realign. Or be removed in Jesus' name. I speak over the President of the United States. That you will accomplish everything Almighty God sent you into that house to do. Regardless of who likes it or who doesn't. And you will have a visitation from heaven. And you will come into an intimate knowledge of Jesus Christ and be filled with Holy Spirit. And we don't care who likes it. And every system that is opposed to that will be pushed out of the way, dismantled, fail, be exposed. Every selfish ambition, every spirit of pride that is just there for the power and the prestige or wants to turn this nation away from our godly Christian, Judeo-Christian roots, we say, you will fail. You will fail. And the cause of Christ will succeed. And every giant that has been raised up to stand against him in this nation, you will fall. The ecclesia will take you out. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit will take you out. Angels will take you out. You are no match for any of the above. You are no match for Father, Son, Holy Ghost, or His family, or His angel armies. You are no match for His Word. You are no match for His prophetic decrees that flow. You are no match for any of it. So we push you back. And we say, your 
finest hour has come and gone. And the church now rises to the place that he has called us to walk in. The Melchizedek anointing. King, priest, order of Melchizedek. Whom Jesus is the head, Mr. Melchizedek. And has an order of priesthood of kings and priests under him. We